<laughs> they have cockatiels in that pizza parlor where you're hanging out. I know. <laughs> I know. This is a pizza parlor. It's it's where the okay. DEF CON, it's where our local DEF CON group meets. So I, I like it as a background. It makes me feel like I'm at a DEF CON meetup. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I guess uh, the yes, the birds escaped again. So we, I guess it's almost like toddlers escaping. It's it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, so let's see what else is going on. I don't know. Go ahead, Paul. I was just we should uh, talk about whether we need to order one of those Elod e tuners just to have one. Yeah, the fact that it's available, right? It looked like it was. Let me get yeah. the web page. In stock shipping in three to four days, it says. It doesn't say how many they have in stock. That's nice. It, I was able to get it into English eventually. It, it fought me. But... I missed that oh. part. What, what is it? It's a repackaging of the mini tuner, uh, but available and with an actual box around it. Um, oh. So a DVB-S2 receiver that can receive in the, at IF from 250 to 2450 megahertz, 150 euro, if you don't have to pay that. Here, I'll put, the, I'll put the link in the chat again, because he, he might have joined after that was posted. Yeah, so he, he won't he won't see any of the chat before. Yeah, I, I missed Yeah, here. yeah. If you're familiar with the mini oh. tuner, then then oh. you should then that 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 should look familiar. I think we should. We should go ahead and buy it. So I have to agree to this uh, to this uh, uh, statement here, but it's all in French. What am I agreeing to? It's it's <laughs> it's, it's France. It's got to be I, good. I took four years of Russian. I don't know any French. French Russian. I don't know. Yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all good if it's for, if it's from France. It's it's going to be good for you. Oh, okay. It's yeah, about selling. I, it's about selling your data to advertisers, by the yeah. way. So, I oh, recommend you not agree to it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh well. The uh, yeah, but this is good. It came up in English for me. It didn't. Uh, oh, I've been interesting. English button somewhere. There is, but you have to dismiss the uh, the disclaimer before it'll let you oh. click it. <laughs> oh, there's the English button, but it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Oh. So should we buy one for the lab or just for uh, for personal use? Is the the mini did the mini tuner came from me, right? That I donated it. It came from you, but I'm not sure what the status of it is. Yeah, I'm not sure what the status of, of it is either, but I'm in favor of buying anything that helps us. And this looks like good. it can help us. It might be good to have one that belongs to the lab. Yeah, it might be good to have one that belongs to the lab. All right, I'll buy it right now oh, if you. Uh, thank you, Everest has Everest has posted the English link. Thank oh, you. That would have been easy enough to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. The URL hack, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, sh I was not paying attention. I'm sorry. Thank you, Everest. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, Rick, that's uh, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, I think we should go ahead and let's go ahead and buy it. Then or I can own it and it can stay with the lab. And if I ever need to take mine back, then then I can do that because I might want to build a station that uses it for the stuff that we're putting up that we will definitely be putting up on mountains so that'd be nice to to get it back on loan and I think yeah. we can I think we can afford it uh we're, we've used up I think we're, we were right exactly we, we did a really good job so we had a budget for one remote lab and we've managed to get three remote labs, like two remote labs plus uh, remote uh, of some remote lab equipment, well, actually four, some remote lab equipment in Washington, DC for remote lab east version 2.0, and then um, a remote lab south and remote lab west from the original grant that really only had room, you know, had allocation for one, and then remote lab uh, in the UK. So, so we're, we're quota busting, but like, we don't have, I don't think we have any budget, but, but I think we have some donations that might be able to cover it. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and do it. I'll write it down as an action item so that we can have 
have a really useful piece of equipment in the lab. <clears throat> All right, I've got it written it down, so of course it'll happen, right? Or it's more likely. <clears throat> Very good. Oh, this is the, yeah, I've, I recognize that name, the Long Mind. Well, From this is, this is uh, the Linux uh, version of, well, uh, which drives the mini tuner. So I fork it and then it's, uh, well, one, you can uh, command it and have all the status in MQTT. So it's very convenient. And the other is that uh, it uh, now have the transport stream output, which is, which has the Windows version only. And now uh, there is the BB frame output uh, with this uh, fork. Yeah, it, this it, is uh, good stuff. I just committed uh, today, I think. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. This is because I, I saw um, Dr. Estevez was, was working with this for his, his project and his blog too. And it was neat to see that. So thank you. This is great, great stuff. Cool. So, hey, Rick, how are you? Uh, frustrated. Oh, dear. <laughs> what else is new? Welcome to the club. <laughs> so, so, I cleaned up. I've got a project over here for NASA. That's all done. I'm just waiting for them to send money and I'll return it. And then I got a clean bench. So, I went and pulled out a box. <clears throat> that has all my vigilant stuff in it. And here we have our perfectly good FPGA board for me to get back in business with, right? Not so much. Turns out uh, when you move across country, things happen. So on the back of the board is a socket for an SD card. It's a really important part of this, this board because it fires up your Linux machine. Well, it was ripped off the board, complete with all the traces and all the pads underneath it. Totally ripped off the board physically. I have RTV'd it back on board, so don't be, uh, don't think it's working yet. And I am slowly proceeding with number 30 wire to hook up all nine pins plus two special pins plus the case and uh, i'm trying to get it all hooked back up again what and uh, whatever did you do to deserve this purgatory i moved <laughs> moving, moving companies are they, they, you know yeah but you don't have to do this this is not you don't have to punish yourself by grafting on blue wires to fix something that they broke. You can oh, start over, you know. No, no, we're, no? <laughs> we're it's it, we moved a year ago, so you know, oh, dear. Have to pay attention to this. And yeah. I didn't want to spend it, the board price is now up to six hundred dollars, and I wasn't going to spend another six hundred dollars. I'm just yeah. Wow. I'm, so you're, you're, you're trying to repair it. You're trying to rehabilitate yeah. it and get it back into I service. I think I had six of the wires hooked up. They were the easy ones. <laughs> and, and, and I now, uh, well, I'm, I'll, I'll get it working again. And I have, and I have a project. Oh. Uh, and I saw that you sent an email to Max. I'm uh, not Max. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Charles. Charles. Yeah. Charles Hill. Uh, and, um, uh, so I told Charles what my project was. Uh, the project is actually useful for my business, but it's mostly about just getting back on in the saddle. And it's uh, <clears throat> take this whole thing and make a sine wave at one kilohertz. Now this doesn't sound like rocket science, does it? Yeah, it's a hardware hello world. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. But, what I really want is I rig V. 
uh, you're familiar with IV, IV uh, the modulated version. Well, I'd actually like both the modulated, the Manchester, and the and the digitally modulated, all three signals coming out. But mostly I want the one kilohertz. So that means that I need one kilohertz plus something to say, is it a big sine wave or a little sine wave? Because they all have two sizes. They have 100% and whatever it is, I forgot, 35%, something like that. And so now I need I need to have the Linux side say, tell the fabric, oh, make, make another sine wave, but make it this size or that size. So that's a little more complicated. But what I really, really want is I rig A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that means I need to also tell it what is the frequency uh, of the sine wave. So it might be a kilohertz or a hundred kilohertz or something in between. Huh, okay. So, so the project you see evolves into something I can actually use in my business and will get me back in in the seat. So I get it out. I'm already I'm I'm excited. I download the software. You you forgot to tell me it's not Bavado anymore. <laughs> it's Bavado is one little piece of the software now. I didn't know that. The software has I forgot what it's called. It has this whole suite of stuff around it for programming both sides of the interface. I didn't know that. And lots of stuff that I missed in the last two years. So, so I think what you're are you talking about like Vitus? The, yes, the exactly. yeah, Vitus. yeah, okay, yeah. We've gotten so we've gotten, all, we've gotten very familiar with Vitus because it used to be that you just exported hardware to an SDK, and yeah, that the exactly. SDK was handled essentially from like from Vovado, like everything was yeah. done from Vovado. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they yeah you they split Vovado it off over on this side and over on that yeah. side. You get a telnet link in and mm -hmm. you manually type some C code and everything right. works. Yes. I guess, I guess it's not that way anymore. Things no. <laughs> and I missed it. So, yeah. So, uh, so the other there's day. Some, no, there's some okay. good things about it. Um, well, there are there I are some I'll... there are some nice things about it, but it is uh, there there are also some some extra baggage, I would say, and and cruft well, and and I'm and it drags along it. like all like I think it's based on Eclipse. So if you everything that you love about Eclipse, you'll now also love about this. I, well I, it didn't start off very well because the <laughs> downloading was a um eight hour task it should yeah. have only taken five but it kept stopping and saying oh i gotta start over because i missed something and and so it was eight hours to download it um of course i've only got a dsl connection to the internet because i'm so far out of town they don't have any fiber out here yet. Uh, but anyway, I got it downloaded and installed, and I haven't got a clue what it is other than Bravado. I know what that is. But uh, so I've got a project, I've got hardware, I've got the software, and it turns out that I thought I knew something, but it turns out I know almost nothing about any of them. No, you're not far. You really I'm aren't. Hard. It Hang in there. So, well, these last four wires are really hard. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> these, I, I, I think I know what ones. you're. I know what you're up against. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not nice to rip something off a board. I ha that hasn't happened to me in forever. Yeah. Uh, so this poor board is sitting here useless yet. Soon uh, though. And then, and then I double checked online just to see what was what and. And I thought maybe I'd buy one of the boards that you have. And that with the RF boards, only five grand. I said, well, I can Yeah, do that. it's not affordable by individuals. That's why we well, work so that's why we work so hard to make it accessible as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. yeah. Over so you, over the you internet. Because the, the accessibility stuff yet, but that's okay. You'll get to it. Well, yeah, you should no, you should have it. I think that went out right away. I'll do it again. So, Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, you wow. should have a link to the it's well, the remote labs repo. I'll I'll, well, I'll see, do it I again though. If you if you didn't see it in email, then I'll do it again. 
Yeah, I'm trying again, just okay. just to be sure. I maybe I can find it, but well, that's then, okay. I, I got Charles's uh, email wrong the first time because I had an O instead of a zero. Okay. So, so it, and, and, never a dull moment around here, right? Well, I my younger son, who is the only one who lives not in Colorado, he lives in Florida. He flew in in the middle of my operating the second half of the sweepstakes contest. And I had told him that in the last year, there's never a day without contractors. So sure enough, the doorbell rings this morning and we have the contractors who are rebuilding my garage. And then the other contractor shows up from John Deere ready to take my my brand new John Deere tractor and give it an oil change and lube and change up. And he was a really nice guy. He, he even uh, took the front end loader up and put on the snowblower. So I'm ready for the winter now. Very good. At for least, at least in someone Southern is. California wouldn't even know what a snowblower is. but In the mountains we do, but most people don't. Got a nice 54 inch wide snowblower. And Very good. I think it would just zip, 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 but it takes me two hours because I've got a lot of property here to clear. So I'm ready to go. And I'm going to finish these stupid wires. <laughs> and I'm going to plug this thing in and I'm going to find out if that new, whatever you called it, this uh, thing, software. Vitus, yeah. Uh, or yeah, you know, it's down. it's either Vitus or Vitus. It's V I T I S. And honest, yeah. real honestly, it's just an IDE. Once you see it, it's like it's like any other IDE. It's a little clunky, but it's uh, what it, they did is I think they realized that they had to separate processor side from the HDL or PL yeah, side. The PL and PS sides and the, it was just getting so to they needed something and. You know, and and you notice that they for a while they were they were declaring it to be an open source tool because it's built on Eclipse. They don't really say that as much as they used to, um, but in in the beginning they were they were talking about how they wanted to incorporate more open source tools into into their workflow. Now I'm not sure since I don't I don't know what the plan is with the sale, but I see uh, there's the, on the roadmap to continuing development of, of Vitus, uh, but it's just like any other IDE you've ever I'll, worked with before. I'll you have a central, you know, all IDEs are the same. In the center yeah. is where you type your code. And usually on your left is going to be an explorer or file, you know, file management thing, right? And over wow. on the right is going to be your variables and all of the debugger stuff and and so some sort of instrumentation. So exploration is always on the left, instrumentation on the right. There might be nine or 10 windows, there might be one or two windows, but the big center space is what you're doing and the console is down on the bottom. And this is the design pattern for almost every single IDE that we have. There's, yeah. there's very yeah. little variation. And the, yeah. this is exactly the same, so do not be- Okay. Do not be upset by this. Just in, just keep hitting it with the tire iron, and it'll. Yeah. It'll... Well, even Altium Designer is that way now. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think everybody has figured that out. That yeah. Seems to work. Yes. Thank well, goodness. Like you know, good. otherwise, like because we have to now nowadays you have to switch between all these different tool chains, and and you'll have one that will flare up, or you'll have to use for a contract, and then somebody else wants to use something else, and they better all have the same design pattern, or we'd be we'd yeah. be hosed. Yeah. So does that mean that with Vitus, I can program the the hardware and the C code at the same time? Yes, if you have five, 10 hands. Yeah, well, I, mean, have 10 hands but I, mean, <laughs> I don't need totally different tools to do it like I used to. Well, they're totally different tools. They're just all in the same package. They, yeah. they, it's just a wrapper for the tools. Right? Kind of. Oh, the, so I, Vitus is the processor side. So to me, Vitus is the C code for the ARM, for the Zinc. And then oh, if you want to do... Has, but Vitus includes um, um, the, the hardware so software also. What you do is you, when you start up a startup Vitus and you, and you start a new project, you import the platform, meaning you import the XSA file. Oh, but, I'm seeing. But if you have to make any changes to okay, so I'm I'm a 
I'm a journeyman, not a master here, but like if you need to make any changes to the PL, then you go back to Vivado, you make the changes there, export a new X XSA, import it back into Vitus. So it's all, it's separate. Uh, okay. You cannot, you okay. cannot, as far as I know, and I'm sure people will correct me if I'm wrong. If you need to make any changes to the, to the, to the PL, you, you don't do it from Vitus, you do it from Vivado. So well, Vivado for okay. PL and Vitus for PS and you import, you, and it's really, per, it's pretty straightforward. When you export hmm. hardware platform, you export your XSA and your bit file, then what we do is we, we go to Petalinux and we, we make a Petalinux build. And then that is what you're kind of relying upon to uh, when you're doing the writing in Vitus is that we're we're uh we're bossing the the I, Linux. I saw build a around. reference when I was downloading all this to pedal Linux and I said what the hell is that? But em embedded Linux operating system for a, for for Zinc. Because because this thing came with a Linux, but that wasn't the Linux it came right. with. Oh. Yeah, there's a whole whole ecosystem of Linux upwriting systems out there. And so the SD card probably comes with something. Um, yeah, but what you will probably want to do is is pick a target and build a custom embedded Linux. And Peta Linux is what we use. And if there's a better option out there, I, I don't think we know it yet. So yeah. oh, that's, <laughs> that's what Xilinx. So if it's a Xilinx based board, then Peta Linux is what you're probably going to want to use because then it supports all of the stuff that people have written for, for Xilinx. Well, hopefully there's there's recognition of the old Z board because it's still being sold. So yeah, no, it's uh, in there somewhere. Yes, the the board is that that'll come right up in in Vitus when you're when you're saying yeah. I want to do a new application. If you just yeah. want to start out from Vitus, you can say because the board support package is is built in as far as I know, it's in there. So you got the little connector at the top here. That's the one I want to use. That's the one that takes your RF board. <laughs> okay. And then whatever it is now, you said I might find some on eBay once in a while. So yeah. And yeah, they're there, but they're not cheaper. No. <laughs> I might as well pay full list. No, price. it's uh, I know it's uh, it's a little off-putting to um, to troll eBay and then find that there's used stuff in this category and it's the same as paying retail from Digilent. <laughs> so sometimes you you know what has worked for us in the past is if you can come up with a common misspelling and put that into your search then occasionally people will misspell the name of the board or oh. not have a dash or include a dash uh -huh. that doesn't exist and then less people will bid on it it's the, it's it's down to that sort of strategy for eBay. Yeah, I remember the days when you used to find bargains on eBay, and now it's pretty much um, it's well, almost an Amazon like marketing. Almost, and that's just, I think it's just because supply chain is so is still uh, the the supply chain is still very stressed. So when there's nothing to buy, then used prices come up. Yeah, it's, it's just that's the market. That's how. That's how buying works, right? When you have a very limited supply, it doesn't matter. There's no there's no bargains to be had because there's no supply anywhere. So used, just like used cars right now are extremely expensive. Well, ultimately, whether it's for a ham radio project or a commercial project, I want to relay out this board with, and, and I want to find out, is this little tiny Xilinx 7020, is that good enough for what I want? If not, then what is? And um, then I want to lay out my own board and yeah. find a supplier who can build it for me because not all suppliers can do those really fine VGA parts. Right. And and it's probably like a 10 layer board, 10 layer board just to get all the pins out. But I've got all the tools to do it. And I know how to do that. I know how to lay out the board that with LPM Designer. And that's a really good suite now. They've expanded it dramatically. So I can even put my design in the cloud and let you watch and comment on it as I go, you know? Yeah, LTM, so that, that, LTM is, is what our 
our our probably our go to uh, layout designer, uh, which it's, is uh, Keith. He's that's the one that he requested, and that's the one that we've used for the for the products that we've done so far. It's good. That, that's the one I pay full price for, and and my customers are very happy with it. Yeah, it's good uh, stuff. I've got a lot of boards, both for me and for my customers, and some ham radio boards. So it's easy because I can just tell all the designer, oh, I got one of these parts. Yeah. And it'll say, oh, you got one of those parts? Well, we'll go get the part. We'll tell you all about the bill of materials. We'll yeah. put the part on your board automatically. We'll even bring out the pins automatically. Uh, so it just falls right into place very nicely. Uh, when you have professional tools, they really work. Yeah. That that I know how to do. So I'm gonna get myself back into this thing. Okay. Oh, Except I got would you a, would you be willing to review the boards that we're gonna be working on? Of course. And okay, thank you. That would be super if helpful. Your, if your board layout guy uh, is using Altium Designer, ask him if he's uh, signed up for Altium 365. Altium 365? Okay. Yes. Altium 365 is not, they don't charge more money for that. It's part of the commercial license for the pro version, which I have. And that's the piece that allows you to take your design, place it in the cloud, and then define who can do what with it now that it's in the cloud. Like you can have more than one designer working at the same time. That's a little tricky. But you can have reviewers, and reviewers can have privileges to leave comments um, and you know circle on the schematic or on the layout. This is wrong. You ought to go do it the other way. Uh, Altium 365 makes that review process very nice. And you then fix it or don't fix it and make another comment and check that is done. But all of those comments and all of those fixes are configuration managed over time as well. Oh, that's really cool. That sounds very similar to yeah. the way GitHub, like the GitHub workflow. Sure. That's cool. Okay, and did, I layout. didn't know this. This is this is new since the last time I well, I looked at really hard only, at Altium. They've only rolled this out in the in the last few months, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they rolled it out. In the in the broad generality of all of their customers yet or not? They, okay. When they first rolled it out, they said, "You are one of the select few." Who... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't right. exactly a beta tester, but, right. <laughs> and then I ignored the whole thing right. for a while. Because were they I going like wanted... like you're the select few that will pay for this? Is that what they said, or what the, no, did they, they let they try it out for free? This no, this whole thing is free for if you all. have the if you have the paid already. If you have the paid license. Okay, all right. If that's that's cool. License, that's not bad. It's no go. No. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> if, you, if he's got a free license, then he'll have to email. No, you. no, because because either either O R I or I bought it for him in order to okay. do our uh, transionospheric boards and yeah. it was it was worth every penny it was really oh, yeah. good that we it was a choice yeah. between keycad which is the go-to open source layout yeah. tool yeah. and altium and and the designer the volunteer preferred altium and i'm like okay you know because it, it really if, if i if i made him work in keycad then it wouldn't be done because he, he doesn't like keycad because the design decisions in the tool are so different and that's yeah. what that's what so you know okay fine we since we're it, it, this is one of those things that keeps coming up like as an open source organization um we have we've decided to pick our battles so yeah. we would really yeah. like for every for the tool chains to all be open source but if i went around making people use octave instead of matlab or if i forced them to use keycad every single time instead of altium then we would get very little done. We're very not in the business of making tools, even though that is something that we've looked at getting into to help people make tools and we will use an open source tool as soon as it's ready. You know, well, but in the case of our volunteers doing layout, it's been Altium has been the one that they've picked. Right. So well, there are some tools like Altium that are moving ahead so fast that if you try to do an open source thing to catch up, you'll never get there. 
I won't say never because KiCad has come so far so quickly, but it's, you know, you just have to be accommodating and help, you know, if, you, if well, you're- things like OVM 365 are just game changers on top of what's already fabulous program. Yeah, what you're describing you sounds like it, it sounds like it integrates Altium into a process of, of collaborative work and, and configuration management at the same time. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. does all of that stuff. It, it, I was using it with, uh, uh, with conventional configuration management tools for years. It, it was already always integrated with all the conventional tools. Uh, but now it's this 365 thing, thing is all new. Uh, okay. I, I'll I, see. I, I'll see I, if he has. He still has the license, and and I'll ask him if he's if if he can log in and kind of like update it and see if he sees any of that. Have him contact me if he's interested in discussing it. Um, okay, yeah. that will do. Because um, I think Sasha is uh, is moving direction. very quickly on the RF side. I I think we need to lay out some RF boards and to test our failover to test our performance and radio uh, frequency the radio frequency chains and. I know that Leonard um, Leonard Deguez is very interested in taking the recently announced low cost uh, Xilinx chip and doing essentially a board that is would be oh, a, no. a, a up, updated Pluto what, with what, with that. What do you mean by low cost? The I, pricing. I the this is the Z the ZU the ZUCT. It's a it's the recently announced low cost like recently as in early November. Uh, low cost FPGA from from Xilinx, oh, and you're not talking about the RF parts. No, this is not this is not an RF, uh, not an RF SOC or anything like that. It's a it's the a Xilinx. SOCs for in the thousands of dollars. Oh, per... yeah, those are those are kind of pricey. They're neat. I took a class in about the RF SOC. Um, took a class about that part, and it does all sorts of amazing things that are cool. Um, Better and then that. and then there's a USRP um, that features the these this chipset uh, that features Xilinx, the chips and Xilinx it's it's like tw the... it's a twenty two thousand dollar USRP. <laughs> I know, I know, and the Xilinx yeah. website had the USRP box on the Xilinx yeah. website. You I bet said, they what did. The hell? They what? did. Well, why they, they, that, they, why they, did they oh, cool. leave when things were just getting exciting? Yeah, well, of course they did because it's featuring. It's a great it's, it's a it's a great development platform if you can afford it, but that is not. I mean, we it's it's no. extremely expensive. It's very yeah. capable and very high end, but it's a nosebleed territory, really. Well, I did. I I thought maybe I was missing something, so I went online looking for. Uh, there across the street from where I used to work in Annapolis is a company called Annapolis Microsystems. And all they do is Xilinx designs for NSA. So price was no object for them. So I said, well, I'm gonna go check what they're doing and see if I can buy some of those chips. So for uh, 20 or $30,000 a chip, they're listed as no stock. Right, so, so call. <laughs> It, it, yeah, yeah cool. so, it says, <laughs> so it turns out uh, the entire Xilinx product line from beginning to end is no stock. So what am I supposed to do when I finally get a design to work on the Z board? Uh, Just hang in there. Uh, it, it won't be like this forever and it will change yes. quickly. And and you said there's a new line that I'm not familiar with. I should yeah, this is uh, well Leonard Leonard spotted it and he's like, we need to do an RF board based on the lower cost Xilinx. Like, yes, we have to have a big FPGA for this transponder that we're working on, but a low cost, lower cost SDR board uh, for for different applications would well, be that could exciting. Be real handy, you know? Yes, no, it, it could. But have you looked to see if you can actually buy those or is it? That vaporware also. They're not shipping yet. So what we're trying yeah. to do is find pricing to get. Uh, so we have a couple of different people asking about the pricing, but they're not they're not scheduled to ship until 2023. Um, but they're they, they're putting their back into it. Oh, wait a minute, 2023 is five weeks away. You know, coming right up. <laughs> coming right up. Yeah. Oh God. 
Yeah, let me get the let me get the precise model number because my memory is pretty tattered That's okay. these yeah. days. My short term memory is I'm just, I just hadn't heard of a new low cost chip. Mm. Okay, got it. I'm gonna put it in chat. Okay, I got most of it right. A ZU3T Ultra Scale Plus SOC, and this is supposed to be low cost. So mm -hmm. they're 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 now ratcheting right down uh, after spending a lot of time at the that's high the end SOC of the market. Chip, huh? Yep, it is. So that's. I was thinking low cost might they might throw that part out, but no, I think they're. I, th I think this is worth tracking and and looking really hard at and Leonard would really like for uh, for ORI to to put some time into uh, designing a board with this on it for um, for radio radio work. Um, right. So anyway, keep an eye on it. We'll we'll try to find out pricing as quickly as we can and it won't uh, it's not shipping yet. So you won't find this anywhere. Yes. But it's pretty exciting. And there's another one that was announced alongside of it. Uh, but this is much more uh, in the ballpark for for the so for the sorts of things that you do and that we do. It's uh it's more it's something to to to, to look at and to track. Okay. So there's plenty going on. <laughs> it's a, but yeah, the the in terms of supply chain, because yes, it's frustrating to um to constantly run up against nothing available uh, for over on one of our one of our other teams is um, working very, very hard on a receiver project that is completely dependent on Raspberry Pis. So it's based on a Raspberry Pi and then lots of code and then a receiver board that connects to the Raspberry Pi. And it's really hard to get Raspberry Pis. Uh, still, I just spent like almost three hundred dollars for one Raspberry Pi kit. Yes, and it's really I, hard. I, like I when it, they were thirty dollars, but no, well, it, 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 you can't buy those. No, but I bought a Raspberry Pi four kit with all kinds of little whiz bang stuff. Didn't didn't look like three hundred dollars versus thirty dollars, and then I gave it to my son instead. I need you to build me this piece of test equipment for my lab on this Raspberry Pi 4. And he's been working on that for the last month. Um, he's okay. having trouble getting it done. But yeah. I have a 1% problem <clears throat> on my GPS products. And uh, we need a piece of test equipment that can bring the 1% problem to the forefront so that I can fix it. Like, yeah. do things until it until it breaks a hundred percent of the time yeah so. I, I have I have nothing but empathy but but as a raging optimist and and having been through something similar in the past the supply chain problems will be a problem it'll be a brick wall until it suddenly isn't and then yeah. it will and if it I'm will not ready if right. Not, so I that's why I want to get this Z board fixed. Yeah. And then figure out what modern tools work with it. Yeah. And then start getting going. So I have something to the Z board to has ton you're you're not gonna have a, any trouble with the Z board, honestly. Any any of the Z boards, I don't think you'll have a, have much trouble at all because they're so yeah. popular and they're used so much in uh, tutorials and training, and and they're considered to be uh, oh. friendly enough to where there's oh. lot, been lots of attention paid. Well, this to them. is the top of the line Zed board, so yeah, I think you're you're going to be okay. It's it's not you're not going to be left uh, hurting. <laughs> like there are yeah. some boards that are really hard to use that do not have a lot of support, but the Z board is not one of those. It's much more no. friendly, and I've I guess. Dozens of things that plug into the little plugs around the outside edge. Oh, the PLA P mods. Oh, yeah, I've got. Yeah, yeah. I've got like a hundred P mods with yep. all kinds of A to D's, D to A's, RS two thirty two converters, all kinds of crap. 
Yeah, it's uh, really cool. So it's like the, it's the USB build. of the FPGA world almost. Yeah, I can almost build almost any product that I had in mind by plugging things into those sockets yep. and then programming it. Yes. But they leave you hanging to do your own programming. You know? Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> and, and that's the whole point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I guess. To learn how to do that's that. right. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's I got an old LED display and a bunch of switches that don't do anything unless you program them. And, right. Uh, <laughs> got to tell them what cool. to do. It is. Yeah, I'm, I love this board, except that it broke. And so it's slowing me down. Yeah, uh, well. But that's okay, because I got one clean sweep on one half of the sweepstakes. So I'm oh, very good. Congratulations. I was, I used to belong to PVRC. I don't know if you know them. They're, they are the biggest contest group in the nation and in, in uh, centered in BC area. And I still belong to them, but I now belong to a local group out here. But the PVR, one of the PVRC guys with huge scores in the contests said, you know, in the 35 years I've been doing the sweepstakes, I've only got one sweeps cup because it's really hard to get all the sections. It is. And I got another suite this year, uh, one out of two. I had two out of two one year, and uh, I've got a bunch of cups. So I've the local coffee shop says, oh, look what you've got. Oh, nice. It's been a oh, while, but I, I, I did it in 97. <laughs> you got one. So I got one. I'm, it's so, I've come close only once since then, but. But, uh, well, the local I'd... coffee shop, uh, which also serves breakfast and lunch, uh, and they said, well, you can bring in your own cups. And then you walk in, you grab your cup off the shelf, fill it up with coffee, then you order. You know, that, that gets you ahead of the game. That's a good idea. So Stop. I brought one of my sweepstakes cups. But I'm going to have to swap it out because it turns out that it's the same background color as their default coffee cups. So oh, sometimes, no. sometimes oh, no. they put it in the wrong pile. Oh, no. So I'm going to have to get a different. Yeah, year. I think you probably need to swap that one out if you don't so want I it to go wife, away. <laughs> I'm paying $1,500 or $15 for another coffee mug this year because I got one sweep. And if you don't, she doesn't like it because we have so many coffee mugs. Yeah, my tree guy back in in, uh, uh, in 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 Maryland gave me three coffee cups, and they're my almost they're the ones I'm drinking out of now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And I've got an NSA coffee cup from the NSA museum. Yeah, and when you put coffee in it, the whole outside changes. <laughs> is it, it so? It's it, heat it's activated. Crisp. It's got an encrypted message that's heat activated. Oh, that's hilarious. I said, well, okay. I, you know, you collect these things. Yeah. Yep. My All right. heat activated well, coffee mug has a, a Star Trek scene and the people disappear off the transporter pad when you get it hot. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love one <laughs> that's of That's really good. <laughs> wow. Oh, golly gee. All right. I got to go. All right. Well, you've been very helpful to me today. Oh, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. And hopefully Charles will join us if he likes. Um, so sorry about the delay in, in writing him. I, I didn't hear back. And so I, I double checked the email and realized I'd botched his call sign as a zero instead of a O. Um, but hopefully he'll he'll uh, he'll drop by. And did you send it to a Gmail address? Or for him? Yeah. Let me, see. I, I'll Let me look check. And see. Because uh, he's got it, the address he puts out in QRZ, he doesn't check that one very often. <laughs> okay, that's the one I, but that's I, the one I use. Copy. Yeah, I did get a copy of it, so I'll forward it to his other address. Okay, thank you. Private, yeah, it's not, it's uh, it's not a not a Gmail, but he's more than welcome. It's and uh, I'll check, make sure he's got it. Thank you. Uh, the only thing that worries me now, I had breakfast er, with him again Thursday. Um, he's very interested in this project, but he's also quote very busy. Uh, you know, uh, all and of us are all of us are triple booked. So yeah, 
I, I haven't yet figured out what very busy means exactly. <laughs> uh, but I know some of the projects he's working on yeah. are very interesting. Good. Uh, and that's he cool. does still do consulting work for Hewlett Packard. Oh, that's neat. People. Well, you know, people are welcome regardless of uh, yeah. their their level of like what we tell people is that you absolutely do not have to be an expert to join. You just have to be willing to become more of one along the way. And we take everybody from people that are just uh, just here to support and participate and keep up all the way to people who who work on it almost every day. So everyone's welcome. Yeah. And, and we understand, uh, especially now uh, with with our and especially in hardware design, um, there are not a lot of people that do hardware design uh, professionally that have a lot of time. Uh, so we are incredibly grateful uh, to anybody that that wants to pitch in and actually contribute. Uh, but you know, people that are just enthusiastic and want to encourage us—that's the only pay we get. <laughs> so <laughs> anybody that uh, wants to join and follow along or just be, you know, feel like they're included—that's that's what we do. So. All right. So I gotta go, and I thank everybody for the wonderful conversation and extra office hours. And we'll try to do and something uh, during the week, maybe, uh, you know, informal, uh, well, you know, happy holidays if you celebrate it in the US and we'll be here next, next Tuesday, for sure. Well, we got a big turkey and we got <laughs> a lot of people coming. Good we deal. We went to the commissary on Peterson Space Force Base to get our turkey. We had called ahead. And so you had a you have a space turkey. We have a space turkey, and <laughs> I don't know what you're paying for turkey right now, but I Pretty guarantee steep. I guarantee you it's probably not sixty cents a pound. Wow. Okay, that's space turkey. Space turkeys, but <laughs> we had to call ahead because what happens is they get a truckload of these turkeys and they're gone in two days. I believe it. So we got a phone call that said the turkeys were here. And, and hurry up. <laughs> right over to the base, got out my ID, went in, got <laughs> the turkey, and that was that. Wow. <laughs> so 22 so, pounds. So old school, you could catch the space turkey with yeah, the catch it as it's coming off the it's truck. coming off the like out of the atmosphere into the atmosphere. Yeah. It's sort of like keyhole, keyhole turkey. When I worked <laughs> in Paris, the RP turkey. Yes. Back in the uh, <laughs> 70s, we would, Harris, this was the greatest thing ever. I, I, I've learned a lot of lessons over the years. This is one that more companies should consider. Harris, at least that division in upstate New York, would get a tractor trailer load of turkeys. Honestly, yeah, a whole tractor trailer. Park it right out front of the administration building. And then, like Wednesday, um, they let everybody off a half a day early, and all the managers had to stand out front and hand the employees three turkeys. Three turkeys? No, free. Oh, that's free turkeys. turkeys. Okay. That, that's, so but, but still, free. that's Every pretty amazing. Every employee that came out, a manager gave him a tur <laughs> or turkey on the way home. And wow. And they gave him like a half a day, an additional half day off. Right on. Uh, and I want to tell you, we didn't have unhappy employees at that place because you <laughs> treat people well and they work hard. Yep. It's a simple equation. And I think so many companies don't understand that. No, you're right. I don't think we can afford to hand free turkeys out anymore than with the price of turkeys these days. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty high. Yeah. So anyway, have have fun. Have a good you holiday. Bet. We will. All right. Thank you, everybody. And see you again soon.